Morning guys, um, welcome to Devotionals this week. Uh, you see we're standing in a different venue today, I'll explain why in just a moment. Last week in our devotional time we spoke about what it meant to stand before. We're doing that series on standing and uh, we have three parts to this. The first part was what we dealt with last week. Was some, we have to really look at a mirror, we kind of stand before ourselves. So the question is, do we like not just what we see, but do we like who we are? And so much of that is found by way of it being our personal responsibility to be the people of integrity, to be the people of honesty that we want ourselves to be. So when we stand before ourselves, we like what we see. And uh, I just found a, a verse that just to conclude that thought and to begin the next one. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 23, Jesus says this, and we often apply this before we take communion. And Jesus says this, If you are offering your gift at the altar, and remember that your brother has something against you, he says, first go and be reconciled to your brother, and then come and make your offering. He's talking about here, he's talking here about what it means to come to worship God with a free conscience that you've dealt with the issues of hurt, that you've hurt other people, that you've made the apologies that you need to make, and that you stand as well as you can in your relationship with other people before you stand in that relationship with God. A great thought for us to think. Here's a, here's a stranger thought as it talks about the subject of what it means to love myself. Jesus said this, he said that in order to love other people, we need to learn what it means, first of all, to love ourselves. Now, this is not a verse that I have. I don't think I've ever preached on this particular verse because we often talk in, in our Christian experience about self-sacrifice, what it means to lay down your life. And here we have Jesus saying, before you love somebody else, learn what it means to love yourself. And it's a great thought that Jesus shares with us. I want to talk for a moment just about what it means to love yourself. The fact is we've got to do this or learn to do this before we learn to love others and when we've learned to love and respect ourselves it'll be that much easier to take what we apply into our lives to those that are around us you know in my experience as a pastor and talking with people and and particularly young people I see a, a tendency towards self-hatred rather than self-love self-hatred is a very wicked thing where we compare ourselves to those who are around us and we begin to resent the fact that we may not be as good looking as we want to be we may not be as gifted as we would like to be and we do that because we compare ourselves with people around us that's a fatal mistake never compare yourself to anybody god would want you to know that he's made you perfect god has made you the way he wants you to be he didn't make any mistakes when he made you the way that you are and he loves you just like that. We often apply the same rules of loving ourselves as we do to loving others. We say that if I want to love somebody else, there are conditions to my love. How sad that we apply those same conditions to ourselves. Where we say, I'm only going to love myself when I look like this, when I can do this, when I have this gift. We self-love ourselves in exactly the same way. So we let the media determine how we love ourselves we let our peers determine how we love ourselves we love we go on self-improvement courses we read self-improvement books and i don't want to knock those things completely because i think there might be an element of good in them but if that is the reason that we do what we do we're in a lot of problem if we're doing those things so that we can love ourselves then we find ourselves in a bad particular place I think one of the keys to self-love is to understand how much we are loved by our Heavenly Father. It would be great to be able to stand before you today and to say, it, you can love yourself like your human father loves you. And I always feel bad saying that because I know full well that there are many people out there who have not been loved by their human fathers as they would like their human fathers to have loved them. And they walk in this dysfunctional relationship with themselves because they've been deprived of the love of a father. I'm deeply sorry for people like that. And I have a word for fathers out there 
that you as fathers need to let your kids know that you love them and you know how you do that is you tell them how many men feel it's like wishy-washy or maybe overly sentimental to tell your kid man I really love you I respect you I admire you but I want to implore you fathers because I read a little thing that said this the other day that when talking about mom's love toward a kid kids presume that mom loves them but when it comes to a dad's love a dad's love is prized your kids are prized the fact that you articulate and speak your love over them your words are unbelievably important and every kid especially your daughters you men need to know how much your kids need to hear the words i love you i respect you i value i think that you are awesome and when you do that you're kindling within that young person a desire to be more like you first of all and you are a reflection of who god is now god does not need a reflection because he's god but he reflects himself to your kids through you so i tell you fathers particularly you fathers let your kids know verbally that you really really love them so this human factor is very, very important but some of you may need to understand too that uh, even though you may never have heard the words i love you from your human father you need to hear them from your heavenly father because he's the one at the end of the day that really really counts i wish you could realize and i don't think any of us has even the faintest deepest clue of what it means for god to say he loves us completely totally unto death but he does and when you realize how much your heavenly father loves you your self-worth is going to go through the roof so i hope that you understand that today but there's another aspect and as i said at the beginning you'll notice that today we're standing in front of the the old church this is the church that the norwegian settlers built in 1882 they came out from norway here and they built this beautiful little facility that we still use today for weddings and for funerals and for midweek services i love this building and i love the fact that those people loved this building but the fact today is god does not live in a building anymore you see that's very much old testament thinking where God's presence was relegated to a building, to the temple. And if you wanted to visit with God, then you went to the temple. So in an Old Testament sort of style or thinking, this would have been regarded as the temple where God would live. Now I need to tell you, God does not live here. It's a beautiful building. We love it. It's very functional. But it is just brick and mortar. You now, according to the Holy Spirit living within you, are the place where God dwells. So I hope that you will look after your temple really well as we look after this temple physically as well as we possibly can. But you now are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God does not dwell in buildings made by men. He dwells now in a body of flesh and blood that's you and it's me. Now we need to value that temple. We need to love that temple. We need to respect that temple. And very often we tend to ignore it. We think, well, God's just spiritual. Uh, the more I, I'm thinking about it, the more I realize that there is such an importance to us looking after the physical temple that God has given to us. The things that we eat, the things that we, the habits that we have, the, 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 the use of substances, whatever they may be, make sure, guys, that we use our temple really well. Keep it clean. Because I need to remind you that God is the Holy Spirit and He dwells in holy vessels. So let's look after the temple. Some of us would wish we had a nicer temple, but it doesn't matter at all. At the end of the day, we're going to get a great new temple when we get to heaven. But right now, this is all we have. So let's look after it really well. Go and have a great week. Remember how much God loves you, prizes you, adores you, and, and thinks that you are absolutely awesome. And I hope that the love for yourself will be a reflection of the love that he has for you today. Go and have a great week and we'll see you on Sunday.